the forehead of your robot. It was in December 17, 1989, when the world was introduced to the family known as the Simpsons. They are thought to reside in a town called Springfield which probably takes place in Oregon within the United States. They can be seen several times a week on almost any channel at almost any time. The series is presented as an animated sitcom that is a spin-off from The Tracy Ullman Show, where they first appeared in April 19, 1987. There are innumerable fan sites that one can find loads of information of America's favorite family. Such sites can provide information on those who provide the voices for the characters and on the animation of the series. I intend to show that there is a big cover-up concerning the people of Springfield and especially of the Simpson family. Fox Broadcasting. The Environmental Protection Agency. The Atomic Energy Commission. World Nuclear Association. U.S. Department of Energy. Nuclear Energy Agency. American Nuclear Society. Nuclear Energy Institute. United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and even the federal government of the United States of America including the President, are all involved in this dastardly conspiracy of the largest civilian nuclear disaster of all time. We have all heard of Three Mile Island and Chernobyl. But no one has heard of the terrible tragedy of Springfield, USA. Why is that? Why is the lackluster management of C. Montgomery Burns allowed to have become so bad? Why is he not in jail for crimes against the environment and against the people of Springfield? And why is his portrayal on The Simpsons seen as a comical farce when in fact he is the greatest monster of all time? And why the cover-up? Why the conspiracy? The governmental and non-governmental agencies are to protect the American public from the mismanagement of poorly constructed and poorly run nuclear power plants. Yet the people of America and even the world, must suffer from the poisons that spew from Springfield. Why has nothing been done about this? Is this one of those too big to fail things? Could the exposure of Springfield's nuclear disaster cause too many people to be negatively affected and that their careers will be ruined? The cover-up is real. There are real lives affected here and people are suffering and have suffered needlessly. And the best way to hide something is put it in plain sight. By showing The Simpsons as an animated sitcom and pretending that they are figments of the mad groaning imagination, the lie that is The Simpsons can be hidden from the truth. The truth is that this is not an animated series like we are led to believe. The truth is that it is a reality show featuring the lives of real people in a real town suffering from the effects of a real environmental disaster. The lies will be shown for what they are. The main intention of this site is to show that the people of Springfield are real people. I intend to provide evidence of their possible deaths from radiation poisoning. I intend to show that the first season was in fact the final season of The Simpsons. I will show that all the events of this show have happened in a span of only one year. And I will prove to you that there are many many people who are trying to hide the truth of a huge disaster that has taken place in the United States of America. Date of recording. There is appreciable speculation on when this series was first recorded, and this is hampered by the lack of events or dates that are mentioned that can show specific times and dates within the series. There are clues, but those clues are few and far between. To start off, there must be some assumptions that must be made. These assumptions include that season 1 is the final season of The Simpsons and not the first as it is widely portrayed. That the Simpsons on the Simpson shorts that are the Tracy Ullman show are one in the fact the same. The cast of the Simpsons never appear to age. That the term animation that is used to describe the Simpsons is an intentional deception. That the different appearances of the Springfield residents that are seen in the Simpson shorts and in season one of the Simpsons are not the result of the animators not settling on a certain style, but in fact evidence of widespread and drastic diseases that the people have contracted through radiation exposure and through other toxic environmental factors. That all the content ever recorded for The Simpsons was all done before April 1987, the date of when The Simpson family first appears on American television for the first time on The Tracy Ullman Show. That the use of voice actors like Dan Castellaneta, Julie Kadner, Nancy Cartwright, Yeardley Smith, Harry Shearer, Hank Azaria and multitudes more is just a scheme to add layers to The Simpsons' conspiracy and make it difficult to expose the truth. 
that the conspiracy is known to those in position and yet they choose to remain oblivious to this plight of the Springfield citizenry. Krusty has a heart attack in 1986 Tracy Ullman style Simpsons. It was on April 5, 1987 that 20th Century Fox Television and the Tracy Ullman show made its debut on American TV. In this new series that premiered, we are introduced to the Simpson family the in segments called the Simpson Shorts. The appearance of the Simpsons is compared to that of poorly drawn animation. Later in 1989, the Simpson people get their own television series named after them called the Simpsons. It becomes discernible that the appearance of this family is considerably different. Some say that a larger budget allows for better animation techniques. I say otherwise. In episode 12 Krusty is arrested, and in a news article that is featured a day before his trial, we see footage of a heart attack that Krusty experienced in 1986. This is proof apparent that the Springfieldians were around and relatively healthier than they would be in less than a year later. The footage scene may not have been captured by Fox cameraman but it is still compelling evidence on the condition of the people in 1986, and then their condition as seen in the Simpson shorts in 1987. Environmental Destruction. As I have shown in Season 1, these people are suffering from innumerable diseases. I can point easily to the source of this epidemic to the leaking radiation of Springfield Nuclear. It is this radiation that not only affects the people, but also affects the environment. Within several episodes in the first season alone, we see uncensored images of environmental damage. In episode 2, we see a plant that starts out as green, and then is seen in a later scene as orange. In episode 4, there is a spooky orange sky during the daytime. This cannot be attributed to a sunset, as it is still too early in the day for such an event. We are also shown a landscape assaulted with toxins that the soil is miscolored and it burns constantly. Again in episode 5, we see a skyscape that is out of the ordinary. Normal blue in one direction, an ominous red orange color. Episode 7 shows off color leaves as the Simpsons track through the forest. Radioactive materials released wantonly into the environment can do many strange and not so wonderful things. In order for Fox Broadcasting to explain the odd-looking people and scenery, they came up with a story that was widely and easily accepted. Fox announced that this is an animated series. Are we to believe that some guy sat at a table and drew each and every frame of The Simpsons? I think not. These people we see on The Simpsons are evidently real flesh and blood people. An animator just cannot add so much detail to the show simply with a pencil. We see signs and symptoms of diseases and the subtle nuances of pollution's effect on the people and places of Springfield. Not even the most dedicated animator with an obsessive attention to detail can come up with this much information in every single frame of The Simpsons. This points to the reality of the series The Simpsons. These are real people who happen to live in a nuclear-tainted location. To say that the suffering of their bodies is a comical farce of an animated cartoon is insulting. To say that it is just an animator's style that explains the weird sky and on land is a travesty. Yet most of world swallowed this hook, line and sinker. Fox had to come up with something to explain the odd situation of Springfield. This was the first lie in the vast cover-up of the people and places that are seen on The Simpsons. But why do this in the first place? If they said the truth that this is a real show with real people, then people would cause an outcry on the huge nuclear disaster that happened and is happening in Springfield and the surrounding communities. The lawsuits and criminal investigations would eat into the coffers of Fox and everyone else involved. Money is God to the greedy and losing their God is worse than losing their lives. So it is by human nature that these evil greedy people would find themselves starting to cover up the devastation of Springfield and its residents. Widespread Disease On the season 1 page is a list of a myriad of diseases that the residents of Springfield have. Diseases that go untreated get worse with time and this is clearly perceptible in these afflicted citizens. It is easy to get an idea of the time sequence of the Simpsons by looking at the progression of their diseases. Since diseases always conclude with the death of the individual and their progression into a state of inferior health, we can see the timeline of the series recording in the people themselves. On the Tracy Ullman show, the Simpsons are seen in their final days as cancer and other wasting diseases are taking their toll. In season 1 of The Simpsons, we see throughout the season various stages of decline in each and every episode. 
it is conclusive that the order of the episodes on season 1 are not shown in sequence. It is because of their extremely poor health on the Tracy Ullman show, and the news blurt of Krusty's heart attack in 1986 that we must conclude that the entire series was recorded in about a year's time. In 1986 Krusty appears normal. By the time he appears in the Tracy Ullman show, he and others are in a severely dire state of health. In later seasons, the Simpsons and other members of Springfield are only in the beginning stages of their decline in health. They suffer from jaundice and goiter and it is this look that is dominated in seasons to end up. I will call this normal for lack of a better term. This decreasing health of Springfield is the reason why the Simpsons shorts were aired before the Simpsons, and why the last weeks of Springfield is called season 1 despite patent evidence to show that it is the end for them. Since it was determined beforehand to use the excuse of poor animation to cover up the state of health, simply showing the series would draw attention to the conspiracy that they are trying to hide. Who can they show a chronologically accurate timeline and hide the failing health of its cast? What is why Tracy Ullman came first? Using the excuse of poor animation, which it is not because this is a reality show with real people, not hand-drawn ones like we are led to believe, they covered up the disease issue. Then using the final weeks of Springfield, they created Season 1 of The Simpsons. Season 2 appears to be a few weeks before Season 1 and the rest of the seasons are shown in no particular order. So it is in fact that we are seeing the lives of The Simpsons and the lives of Springfield backwards. Season 1 is really the last season of The Simpsons. Maggie is the never-aging baby. The smoking gun to this argument that all of this is recorded in a short period of time is the never-aging baby Maggie Simpson. We also see Bart and Lisa and every other child in Springfield always remaining in the same grade and never appearing to grow at all. But it is Maggie's lack of physical development that needs explanation. It is easy to pass off Lisa and the others since they are older and development slows down a lot after age 2. Maggie is under age 2 and yet she seems stagnant in growth. Even though the town is strife with disease and those diseases can stunt the growth of children, these children will still learn to talk and walk and still show some growth. Maggie shows almost none of that. In the two decades of watching Maggie, she has yet to say her first sentence. She has yet to walk competently. Add this with her siblings and we see that there is something amiss. The Simpsons had to be recorded in a time period of a year or less. Voice actors. A fake person. If you check here you will see a vast list of voice actors. This is a list of people who have lent their voices to the people of Springfield. How come voice actors are needed for a show that is about living people? Living people have their own voices and voice actors are not needed. Point taken. But let me remind you that there is a conspiracy involving the ever-popular series The Simpsons. What do Uncle Ben, Aunt Jemima and Betty Crocker all have in common? Nothing. Because they do not exist. These people are the creation of a marketing team for their respective companies. They never existed in any shape or form. They are simply a friendly face of the company they represent. Nothing more. I could say the same about Dan Castellaneta, Julie Kavner, Nancy Cartwright, Yearly Smith, Harry Shearer and Hank Azaria. Who are these people? Are they in fact real? Are they a product of a marketing team? Or is it possible that they are real living people who have been paid to provide a face for a product? Bill Cosby is a real person who was the face of Jell-O, yet he was not involved in Jell-O or its manufacture. Here the voice actors did the same. Just the product is a conspiracy. If, of course, they are real people in the first place. Arnold Strong. So what about all the best stars on the show? The Simpsons is credited with having the most guest appearances than any other show. Many living and famous people will attest that they provided their voice for some Springfield character. This is probably one of the easier counter-arguments to refute. Arnold Schwarzenegger appeared in Hercules in New York, and if you have ever seen this horrid movie, you will notice that Arnold provides the body, but it is someone else's voice. The Simpsons have become quite popular and many celebrities want to be associated with them. Since it was easy to replace the voice of Arnold Schwarzenegger, it is easy to replace the voice of a Springfield person. Considering the amount of content that is seen on The Simpsons, it must not be a hard job to find a suitable person that can fill in as a celebrity. Reasons for a conspiracy. Why is there a cover-up in the first place? 
What could be the motives for lying to the people of the world? Who are all involved in this conspiracy? In this next section, I will attempt to explain some of the possible reasons and motives for this abominable trickery. Too big to fail. Evil Mr. Burns, the Springfield citizenry. In 2008 the phrase, too big to fail, entered America's lexicon. Big money was losing big money and they needed to be bailed out with bigger money. This was a pitiful display of corporate corruption on politics. Billions of dollars were given to billion dollar companies so they could buy new toys. Truly a sickening development in American politics and business. This example of open corruption gives complete disregard to the American people. The greedy, deceitful, untrustworthy know that they can pull the wool over America's eyes because this has happened before. This event was the Springfield nuclear disaster cover-up that is dated to have happened sometime in the early 1980s and this serves as their precedent. There is a huge list of organizations and agencies, most of which are governmental, that dropped the ball on regulating the nuclear plant in Springfield. So many people would be affected in a negative way if there was an investigation on the actions and inactions of Seymour Memory Burns, many would have to answer embarrassing questions on their own personal incompetence. People would be fired and lose their pensions and benefits. Some may even have to go to jail. Nobody wants that, do they? So they all came up with a grand plan to make a scheme to hide the truth. They decided to erase all history of Springfield. Lock up any evidence of any person who has ever lived or worked in Springfield. Silence anyone who didn't play along. And they came up with the brilliant plan to hide in open sight. Sure this plan meant that tens of thousands of Springfield and surrounding residents would die, but at least the evil people at Fox. EPA. Atomic Energy Commission. World Nuclear Association. U.S. Department of Energy. Nuclear Energy Agency. American Nuclear Society. Nuclear Energy Institute. United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The President of the United States, and even those secret members of the world government can all sleep in their own beds and still buy all their new toys. The new god, money. Fox Television was a new enterprise in the 1980s and they were still looking to make their mark on American television. I believe that they sent investigative reporters to Springfield when they caught wind of a nuclear disaster in the making. They must have sent hundreds of camera crews within Springfield and its surrounding communities to document the ruination of the people and the environment. But these well-intentioned Fox reporters were quickly rounded up and forced to work for the conspirators. Those involved did not want their conspiracy exposed before it could even be launched. After bribing the CEOs of Fox, they silenced any reporter that would not join them. This gives perfect reason to why there is so much footage on Springfield. This also accounts to why no one has ever leaked anything to the whistleblower site WikiLeaks. No right-minded evil plotter would let anyone know the truth, especially if the truth being revealed meant losing all their prestige and luxuries. And now with Fox on the side of the conspirators, a new and vast media franchise was at their disposal. With Fox making and editing the Springfield footage, lies about the suffering of the people could be created. Radiation's effects on film and videotape could be said to be a new creative way of animation. The grotesque appearance and obvious signs of disease can once again be animators styling. Showing Springfield as a disaster would also hide the disaster. Weekly and even daily showings of The Simpsons would brainwash the public into believing that Springfield does not exist and never has existed. When Fox came aboard, this was a great advance in the plot that the evildoers ploy. They could now plain and hide the truth in sight of the world and no one would ever find out. But they didn't figure that I, Stacy Reed of Canada, would see them for who they really are. For any evil organization, money is king. The promise of new wealth is a great motivator for these unrighteous hooligans. The threat of fines, jail and exposure are all the reason they need to lie, cheat, steal, and even murder. For them to brush aside all the people of Springfield and watch them die is nothing more serious than swatting an annoying mosquito. If it is too big to fail, not even the death of tens of thousands is enough to stop it, or even slow it down. The corpses of the dead did not even act like a speed bump on the greedy pursuit of wealth and luxury. Wormhole to another reality. In episode 9 there is an odd scene that shows Marge's fantasy of cheating on Homer with some guy named Chuck. It is not possible to record someone's thoughts. So how did the corrupt Fox cameramen do this? 
One possibility is that a wormhole has been created. A wormhole is the ultimate fantasy of any sci-fi fan. If they exist and if they can be created on demand, then space travel can become easier than traveling to anywhere on the Earth. There are wormholes that take you to the future, others to the past, some can take you vast distances, others lead to new dimensions and even alternate universes and realities. With all the excess radiation leaking from the Springfield nuclear plant, a wormhole could have generated itself spontaneously within Springfield city limits. If this thought is true, it would be probably the greatest discovery since the invention of fire, the wheel, and writing. It also would be something that evil troublemakers would want to hide. Like it is known, our thoughts are our own. So for a Fox cameraman to be able to record a dream sequence of Marge is strictly impossible. Unless of course you have a wormhole to an alternate reality where Marge married Chuck and divorced Homer. Take a camera there and film a scene of the happy couple dancing, and splice it into the time Marge is fainted on the cafeteria floor, and now you have a dream sequence. Except this dream really is happening is some other universe. Wormholes to any place and any time would be a great way to make money. Could you imagine finding an universe where gold is a common as dirt? Bringing that back here would make the world's first trillionaires. Such a device that holds such enormous promise simply cannot be shared with any of us ordinary folks. What are we, the commoners on this planet going to do with all the new wealth of money, information or technology? Obviously only the greedy world government and corporations can properly handle such affairs. Thank God for these people. In case you haven't noticed, I am being sarcastic here. Mind reading devices. Mind reading device, mind reading device preventer. Or maybe another reason for a conspiracy is that the conspirators do in fact own a mind reading device. Maybe the dream sequence we saw was really a dream sequence. Such a device in the hands of greedy corporations would lead to record profits as they can start marketing the exact things we desire. There is no more guesswork in what consumers want and that will save so much on research and trial and error. And maybe if it is possible to read minds, maybe it is not so hard to change the minds of those the conspirators want to change. Could this one fact be the reason why so many have been duped by this cover-up? Could this also be the reason why I am not affected by brainwashing? I watch very little TV, and therefore I am not exposed to the influence of the brainwashing techniques seen in commercials and even within the programs themselves. There is a real danger that as I am intently watching the episodes of The Simpsons, I may to become victim to brainwashing. I am thankful that my tinfoil hat will protect me. Parodies? Fantendo's East Broadway. One of the greatest criticisms that I face in saying that The Simpsons was all recorded between 1986 and 1987 is the apparent product placements, parodies and even news events. How can I be so stupid in my naive belief that The Simpsons was completely and entirely recorded in the mid-1980s, when there are references to so many things that fall well after that time period? Well I assure you, I am not stupid. Because you do not see the lie that is The Simpsons, you are the naive fool, not me. These parodies are easy to explain and easier to refute. Because the inhabitants of Springfield are dying slow and painful deaths brought by the negligence of all those responsible, does not mean they lost their creative spirit. In fact, the one good thing from Springfield is the creativity of its citizens. Just search Google and you will see that there is a lot of opinions in the idea that Hollywood is running out of ideas. How many remakes of remakes are needed really? Recasting and refilming movies that were just completed and marketing them as new. I personally have not watched a movie trailer or even kept track of what is out there or coming soon, because I simply do not care for all this Hollywood lame entertainment. I do go to movies, but only movies that someone wants me to see with them. I have not desired to see any film in close to a decade now. I have given up on Hollywood. If you spend just a few minutes searching people's opinions on the failing creativity of Hollywood writers and producers, you will see that they are starving for anything new. The Simpsons has been unquestionably a rich source of new material. There have been countless TV series, movie ideas and even products all made after someone saw it on The Simpsons. Amazing new things have been inspired by the creative minds of Springfield and ruthlessly exploited by others who are making on a profit on their ideas. Tombstone. Yet there is no outcry of plagiarism. 
There is no copyright infringement lawsuits. There is nothing being done to stop the robbing of Springfield's creative treasure. Why? Why has no one in Springfield or from Fox or anywhere stepped in to prevent this? This is a major proof to my conspiracy theory. There is no legal actions because the dead cannot sue. There are so many things you cannot do to a living person. If you violate any one or one of those laws and rules, you can face civil and or criminal action. But the dead have no such protection. If you start slandering a man saying he is a pedophile and likes to eat the hearts of his victims, and this is an outrageous lie, that man can sue you. But if he is dead, you can say anything and everything about him with no consequence at all. The same goes for ideas. If the living never got around to making a patent or something that they could copyright, then all or their ideas are open season for the taking when they are dead. This lack of legal battles over these ideas is proof positive that everyone in Springfield is dead and gone. And the thieves that take their ideas know this, because if anyone believed for one second that the Springfield people are still alive, they would not even attempt to package something the Springfieldians did and mark it as their own. So the next time you see a movie parody or some sort of product on The Simpsons, remember that the dead of Springfield came up with it and never ever will be properly recognized for it. A boycott is needed for all ideas seen on The Simpsons. Getting these conspirators in the pocketbook is the only way to get the truth out. America, land of the freedom and home of the lawsuit. Conclusion. There is one thing about The Simpsons and the portrayal of the Springfield people, they have a wonderful schwa de -Niver. These people are plagued by disease and pollution, corruption and conspiracy and they still find the time to live. Within every episode we see the residents not wasting time and getting right to the task at hand. There is no time to waste. Not to be taken as a panic to hurry up and finish before they die, but more of why wait when it can be done now. Krusty the Clown is arrested, convicted, jailed and released all in one week. Where else in the world can anyone get that quick level of justice anywhere? Normally even the smallest of crimes can take months to resolve. But not in Springfield. Nobody there is a procrastinator. Homer buys a motor home and takes the family camping in one day. Skinner sends Bart to France in a matter of hours. Everything is done quickly and efficiently. If this was anywhere else in America, labor unions would be crying foul to Springfield Nuclear and Mr. Burns. They would be wasting the precious time of Springfieldians have remaining on fighting for compensation packages for lost quality and ultimately lost quantity of life. Even the other citizens are not running to each and every lawyer in the land spending their final moments jammed in courtroom red tape. No. Happiness. These people are saints. There is definitely a conspiracy surrounding the Springfield people on The Simpsons. When Fox Broadcasting and Gracie Films and everyone else involved in creating a so-called animated series, their main concern was to diminish the tragedy of The Simpsons. They never cared to show these people in a positive light. But they did. Fox inadvertently showed an amazing side to life and dealing with suffering. Whereas most of the world has forgotten the value of life, the people of Springfield have embraced it to the fullest extent possible. They chose not to be mired in despair and depression, or locked into one legal battle after another. They accepted their fate and chose life over death and dying. They chose to live when everyone else would have taken the low road and whined and complained. These Springfieldians can teach us so much. And, ironically here, we have to thank the main conspirators, Fox. If there is anything to be saved from the destruction of Springfield and the death of their people, it is this, live and live well. Everyone ever born will die. That is a fact that is inescapable. We must accept it and take this precious gift that we have been given and use it for all it can offer us. Let us not waste time on what ifs and what nots. Let our time here be a shining example to all that we can be. Moaning, groaning, pity seeking, complaining, despair and hopelessness all have no place. Life, love, happiness, acceptance, compassion and hope should govern our lives. Thank you Fox and all you other evil conspirators for this wonderful message of living.